for a phenomenal job. I love the songs and the music and the choir. Y'all did good. Just such a blessing. And I don't know who that actor was portraying a preacher in that commercial we just had. A poor actor, I'm telling you right now. But, uh, yeah, it's our conference we've got coming up in March. Folks, listen, these, <laughs> I don't think they'll mind me saying it, but these are the big dogs that are going to be coming into our church and preaching. They all minister to thousands every Sunday. So uh, be prepared, be, be preparing your heart and get ready for that. There's a lot of folks here today. It's good. It's good. Um, a couple of announcements. Go ahead and turn your Bibles open to Mark the 8th chapter. Mark the 8th chapter. And a couple of announcements. Uh, Jeremy's grandmother passed away, and the funeral was yesterday. This family has been through a lot, and we, we're praying for you, Jeremy. Uh, in the last 15 months, all, all, four of your, uh, all four of your grandparents have passed away, all godly people. And so... Uh, we share your sorrow and are praying for you. I just want you to know that we love you, man. And speaking of that, also Lisa, uh, Lisa Rickard passed away suddenly Friday night at 11 o'clock. It was just really a remarkable change of events. She, uh, she had cancer but was expecting to go home Friday. And just unbelievably things turned bad. And so this is Paul and Maxine Rickard's daughter. And so she passed away. The funeral is Tuesday at 1 o'clock at Maley Yarbrough. Visitation is at 11 o'clock. Just a couple of announcements for you to think about. Well, today we're going to be looking at leaven. And when we talk about leaven, the, the term that we use today would be yeast. But you can't really say it's yeast all the time. Leaven is the name that is given to a microorganism that, that has 1,500 different species and it will attach itself to, I mean, it's so small you can't see with the naked eye, but it, it will attach itself to uh, grain, to uh, fruit, and plants. And, it will, and it's a, a change agent. When uh, it's mixed with water and allowed to sit, there, it will bring about a change. We know it today as, um, today we would say, well, you know, it's brewer's, uh, uh, not brewer's, well, brewer's yeast, and then we would say it's uh, baking uh, yeast. And what happens is the leaven or the yeast is put into the dough and it causes it to rise. And a lot of times we enjoy the beautiful rolls that we have on Wednesday night. Uh, in brewer's yeast, what happens is that the leaven, will at- uh, in the wild, it will attach itself to the grapes. And then, the, especially in Jesus' day, the, the grapes would be crushed, juice would come out, the leaven would be in the juice, and then would be put into a container if it was put into a skin, a goat skin, if it was allowed to sit for a lengthy period of time, it would cause, uh, once again, a change and a fermentation that would take place. Now, in the scripture, leaven is always spoken of as sin. And therefore, if he gives, if the Lord Jesus and Paul uh, and, and Jehovah God gives this, the uh, uh, says that it's sin, then we need to really pay close attention because there's a great lesson to to learn from it. So let's look today and see what it has to say to us in Mark, the 8th chapter, as we continue our series, where it says, and I want us to go back to verse 11. Okay, good. Thank you, guys. The Pharisees came, and they began to argue with Jesus, seeking from him a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply. Remember last week we talked about how Jesus sighed deeply. It's kind of like, man, there's so much to do. He sighed deeply in his spirit, and he said, you guys... You just All you want to do is argue and try and God, play the gotcha game, okay? He said, why does this generation seek a sign? Truly, I say to you, no sign will be given to this generation. So he left them, got into the boat, and went to the other side. And, but they had forgotten to bring bread, and they had only one loaf with them. And he cautioned them, saying, watch out. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of the of Herod. Now that's going to be the central part of the message. So remember that, verse uh, 15. But they began to discuss with one another the fact they had no bread. And Jesus was aware of this. Now, now just think about how, how funny this is, and he's going to talk about it. They, they had seen the miracle of the 5,000 where Jesus taking the bread, and he had fed everybody. And then right before this, he had fed the 4,000, fed everybody. And later we find out Jesus says, I am the bread of life. So there's plenty of bread. But the disciples are saying, we don't have enough bread. Isn't that just like us? Jesus can perform a miracle, 
and do a wonderful work in our life. And two days later, we're like, oh, no. What am I going to do? I'm all alone. And he's like, I, I just was with you. you. You forget so quickly. And so uh, he says, do you not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? And having eyes you do not see, ears you not hear, and do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves of the 5,000, how many baskets full of pieces did you take up? And they said to him, 12. All right, and the seven for the 4,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said, seven. And he said, you don't get it, do you? If I'm here, there's enough. You've got plenty. So let's look, though, and concentrate on the part about leaven. The first thing we want to look at is characteristics of leaven. Leaven is small but powerful, and it causes uh, an increase. It, another definition is that leaven is a change agent. It will bring about a change. And it actually brings about a, 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 a decaying process. So here's what it says here, that it causes a, a swelling. And if this is a picture of sin, what does it mean? Sin comes in, and it can be very small. Oh, it's just a little sin, but it can be very powerful. And if it's not dealt with, it will be like the glob that takes over and the blob that takes over the kitchen and grows and grows and explodes all over the counter. All right? So... What are the characteristics? And when Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of Herod, he was mentioning two diabolically, uh, not diabolically, but two polar opposites. You've got the Pharisees who are the religious of the religious, right? But then you've got Herod who is the ungodly of the ungodly. And so he says, they both have leaven. Well, why was that? Well, there are many things we'll look at later, but one thing in particular is this. They were both, the Pharisees and Herod, they were both a law unto themselves. The Pharisees, they had the Torah, but that wasn't enough. They increased the Torah. 619 more laws were added to the Torah. It was was worse than a government regulation book. Just one thing on top of the other, watch out for this, do this, on and on, to burdening the people down. Jesus said, you just put so much burden on the people. So, But they were making it up as they were going. And then there was Herod. Herod was a law unto himself. He could make up any law that he wanted. In fact, he made up so many laws, he said, I've got a new law. I'm God. (laughs) That was one of them. And in the book of Acts, he proclaims himself as God. God smites him, kills him. You know why? Because God said, you will have no other gods before me. And it sure ain't you, Herod. So, But they had the similarity. And they say, boy, those are stupid people. No, mm-mm, just like it is today. Same thing, different faces, different characters, nicer cars. Here's why. People make it up as they go. People today, well, let me tell you what I think is right. It don't matter what you think is right if it's not according to the Word of God. He has spoken. Well, you know, I just don't know if I can go along. Well, just don't go along and see how far along that gets you. But people today are famous for, I, I just think that this is the right thing. In fact, I was, I was witnessing it under a strange set of circumstances a few weeks ago. Actually, it's been a couple of months ago. I was witnessing to a guy, and uh, I just, he was a skeptic and uh, an agnostic, and and I said, uh, so he actually he was a deist, and he said uh, this was in a store. I happened to meet him in a store. It was interesting, and um, I was undercover. He didn't know I was a preacher. I was incognito, <laughs> and so so I said, what so what do you? believe. What is your basis of morality? What's your basis of morality? He said, do what's right. I said, well, who decides that? You know, the Muslims, they've got an idea of what they think is right. He said, well, you know. I said, no, I don't know. Well, you just, I tell my kids, he's got teenage kids, you do what is right. Making a law unto themselves. And the rest of the story is, he grew up in a Baptist church and went every Sunday. 
May God help him. <laughs> pictures of leaven, though we'll see in Pharisees and Herod. Here are some pictures we're going to see. Hang on. The first one is pride. Let's go ahead and put all of them up. Because the reason why is when we look at pride, pride is the platform from which the other three radiate. Because the Bible says that pride is the beginning of sin. Failure to respond to the grace of God, instead we turn to pride. And from these spring just all kinds of sin. Of course, you know, Lucifer in heaven fell from heaven because of pride. And so when we look at pride, it says this. Pride says, God, God doesn't have, it, have all the answers. I've got some better answers, and I think I know what is best. And the deceptive thing about the leaven of pride is you can't see it oftentimes. You can't see it in yourself. But you can certainly, can't, can't you see it in other people real quickly? Oh, yeah, I can, well, I, can, I can spot a proud. I've got the gift of discernment. I wish some of you that are so proud of having the gift of discernment would work on patience. But anyway, that's another sermon. <laughs> but anyway, well, I'm, I'm just getting more hot water by the minute. <laughs> but uh, pride. And, and we don't see it in ourselves. There's not a spiritual mirror that we're willing to look at because we, we turn blind to it. It's so hard to see. Remember what we said, leaven is a change agent. And it brings about a change in our life that is so subtle and yet so, uh, so impactful upon our lives. So when it comes to pride, we say God can you show me where the pride is? You really have to make a choice. In fact, people will sometimes say to me, I need help. And folks, listen, I, I, I want to help, any, and I will help anybody I can. But let's just, let's, let's just establish one thing. I cannot change you. And let me just take it another step further. The Holy Spirit can't change you. Yeah, you heard me. The Holy Spirit can't change you. That's why Jesus said this. I'm one of those, I kind of believe man has a free will. And Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. That verse of Scripture is not to a lost person, but it's to the church. And He says this, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, I'll come in and I'll sup with him. In other words, you make the choice over whether or not you will open the door and allow me to come in and bring the change that has to take place place in your life and when we humble ourselves and say God reveal to me where the pride is get ready because it may really be it's going to be a severe blow to you but it is the only way that God can deal with the leaven that is in our life pride and what will happen to you is this when you get serious with the Lord when you get serious with the Lord and you say wow wait a minute oh I don't know about the folks I'm hanging around with. Have you ever noticed the people that you hang around with, they are the, tend to be of the same, same mindset? Like, you know, people who, you know, the people who drink and do drugs and, and live wild and hoard them is, you know, all in their vocabulary and all that. They all hang around together. People who like to get together and talk and, and, and tear other people down and their favorite idea is to just, uh, who can we, either in the political world, the music world, or whatever world, or in the church world, or right here in the Covington world. Who can we just talk about? They all get together. And then the people who uh, just uh, are, are, are wanting to just uh, live like they want to live. Anyway, they, they, all, they all get together. And so when you pull back, you start pulling back because you say, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of leaven that I'm feeling in this conversation and in this, this group here. What will they say? You too good for us? You too good for us? Huh? And the answer is, no, I'm not too good for you. But I'll tell you something. There is someone that was too good to me to let me stay where I am right now. And his name is Jesus. And right now, I can't stay where I am. I've got to go and stay close to Him. And if you want to go with me to Calvary, come on. But I'm not going to stay here any longer. You know, sometimes what I see is people say, you know, I want to go immediately back and I want to live. Listen, you need to 
you need to make sure that the leaven gets out of your life so that their leaven doesn't go back on to you. You're saved, but yet you're having to pick it back up again. I know maybe family-wise you have to stay with them and all that, but you know what I'm talking about. Leaven has a way of transferring because it blows in the wind. It has a way of transferring from one person to the other. But pride, the second thing is this, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is not being honest with yourself. There, there are people, there are people who won't come to this church. There are people who won't come to this church because of the hypocrisy in this church. And it starts right here in the pulpit. Yeah. You might say, well, they, sh- they shouldn't feel that way. They do. Because, you see, people, people are not stupid. They can see whether or not it's real or whether or not you've got the leaven going. There's another culture that says this, that we have three faces. There is the face that we present, we present to others, like out in the community or here at church. We got our Jesus face on Sunday morning, you know. So it's the face that we present to others. And then, and, and listen, keep your Jesus face. I'll take it over the devil's scowl that I see from some people anytime, all right? But, you know, sometimes we have to fake it till we make it. So, uh, And then there is the... Uh, the face that we present to our family. And have you noticed that the face we present to our family is, is different from the one we present to the community? Yeah, he's a nice guy out there. You ought to see how he talks at home. So there's the face we present to our family. But then there's the face that we present to ourselves. And that's the face that stares us in the mirror. But I would say that there, and it is my conjecture, that there is a fourth face. And that is the face that presents itself to God. And he sees the truth. You may say, oh, I know myself. Well, you only know part of yourself. You don't know the depths of yourself as he does. And he, he, would you, if you would say, Lord, I present myself to you. I take the leaven out that I, even I cannot see to take care of the hypocrisy that I know is constantly trying to invade my life. Third one would be this, the immorality. Immorality. Now, Herod was a very immoral person. I mean, it was, he was very hedonistic. He didn't think anything about killing people. He didn't think anything about immorality. But his was of a sexual flavor. But immorality, let me give you a, a, a dictionary, the dictionary... Secular dictionary definition of immorality says it is a wicked action. So a person can be immoral without it being sexual. You know, a man may say something like this. I would never cheat on my wife. A man that does that, he ain't worth killing. A man that does that. And he won't think twice about stealing from his employer or his employees. What is theft? What is, immor- what, is, what is adultery? It's stealing what doesn't belong to you. So before we get all high and mighty, let's, let's say, let's just really take it for what it is that the leaven of immorality was even creeping into the lives of, uh, of, of the Pharisees. Because what they did and what Herod did to Jesus, what did they do? They, through their words, both Herod and the Pharisees took Jesus and had him nailed to a cross. And it was a gross, horrible, immoral death with the way they treated him. The leaven of immorality. And then the fourth one under the picture of leaven is rejection. 
they both rejected Christ. Now, Herod was very intrigued. He was very intrigued with John the Baptist. He was very intrigued with Jesus. He was very intrigued with Peter. I mean, he, was, he, he really was intrigued, but in the end, he, he, he rejected. And so did the Pharisees, and Levin does that. Well, I know that Jesus is a good guy, but I, I've got my own good thing going, and I'm just going to stay right with it. Listen, they rejected him. Why? 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 Why do people reject? For them and for us, 2,000 years later, same thing, same circle. It's, it's, the, it's the guilt. When I'm around Jesus or when I'm around people who love Jesus, I feel uncomfortable. You know what that's called? That's called conviction. And you can either do one of two things with conviction, say, oh, Let's get it right, or you can reject it, and that's called guilt. What happens to people is they'll say, I can live with the consequences of what I'm doing. I can live. And yeah, you know what? You can. You can live with them. But you know what else you're going to have to live with? You're going to have to live with the memory. And that don't go away. You've got this thing called a brain. And it follows you around everywhere you go. And you can bury it, whatever it is that you can live with, you can bury it, but the brain doesn't bury it. It pops up at the strangest times. It'll, it'll, it'll pop up in dreams. It'll pop up in other places. And you'll say, I thought I left that behind. no. You just left it, but it's still behind you. And so it was with the Pharisees. Why, why, did they, why did they hate Jesus so much? Because he showed them that they were guilty. If he was just crazy, oh, he's just crazy, don't pay any attention to him. But it was the conviction of their guilt that just would not leave them. And they said, we've got to get rid of the guilt. Let's get rid of Jesus. And it, same thing today. Let's get rid of Jesus. Isn't it astonishing that the people today will stand up for everything except Jesus in our culture, in our politics? Why? Because he, he is the one who is rejected. The second thing that we see is what are examples of leaven? Examples go like this. False doctrine, first of all. Galatians. The fifth chapter, verses 1 through 9, Paul talks about how that false doctrine had come in. They were adding works to grace. And he said, why have you done this? The leaven that you're adding is only going to take over the whole church. And it was false doctrine. And here is how you know if false doctrine is false. If it goes contrary to the Word of God, and the Spirit of God speaks through the Word of God, then it is false. So if it doesn't line up with the Word of God and the Spirit of God, it is not from God. But pride will say, hey, we've got a new thing. We've got a new revelation. We've got a new idea. This is really... And people are like, oh, wow. Yeah, let, let's, let's, let's go with that. False. It appeals to the intellect. It appeals to the emotional, soulish part. Go, totally going contrary to, to what the Word of God says. False doctrine. He said, don't let it get in. The second thing he says that we see an example is 1 Corinthians 5. Tolerating sin. Tolerating sin was this. 1 Corinthians 5, it says that Paul said, what are you doing? Paul was the original Dr. Phil. What are you doing? What are you thinking? He said. You're allowing in your congregation a man who is living with his father's wife. And in other words, he was saying, you are allowing a man who is not only inhabiting his father's house, but cohabiting in his father's house. Get it out. Don't tolerate. Today, we have such a high toleration for sin. And in fact, that church discipline today is just a, a, a thing totally unheard of because there is so much to deal with. 
when it comes to the toleration, he said, don't let it in. Get it out while you can. Luke 12, 1. Not only toleration of sin, but hypocrisy. Now, the reason why I wanted to say that, because Luke 12, 1 says this. Beware of the, the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And then he gives the explanation. He says, which is hypocrisy. So if Jesus constantly mentions hypocrisy, therefore it must be a real problem. And if it's a real problem then, it's probably a real problem today. And if it's a real problem today, we should pay real close attention to it and not say that's for other people. And what we'll do is, oh yeah, those are the religious people he's talking about. No, it, it really it has to do with any and all of us. Now, let's look and see how do we deal with the leaven, okay? How do we deal with the leaven? First of all, there has to be complete removal. Complete removal. Exodus 12, verses 18 through 20. The, the picture is given here in verse 15. Here's what God said to Moses. Get the leaven out of the house. In verse 19, get the leaven out of the dough. Don't have any bread with leaven in it. This was called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This, it, this is the week prior to the Passover. And it comes along in March and in April. And so what they go through is this. What they were going through was, and in fact, uh, I'll get to it in a minute. He, he, said, he said, get the leaven out of the bread. Get the leaven out of the house. Get this. In, in chapter 13, he says, get the leaven out of the territory. I mean, if you'll read chapter 12 and 13, you will be astonished at how that God says, get it out, get it out, get it out, get it out. And if he keeps repeating something, he's trying to get the emphasis, I'm trying to get it through your thick head, deal with the leaven. So what they would do is, they would, they would clean it all out. So today, if, if we modernize it, it would look something like this. Get the vacuum cleaner out, get the mop bucket, get the, get the broom, and get the sweeper, get, get, get the, cl the cloth the cl uh, and the sprays, and go after the leaven. I mean, say, what does it look like? Well, here's what it looks like. It looks like dirt because it attaches itself to dust. Those little particles of skin that come off and, and fly in the air, you know, and they congregate together and they begin to make dust, they've got leaven attached to them. And I know the dirt that comes in, the leaven gets attached to it. So he says, get all the leaven out. He says, get it out of the corners. In fact, today what they'll do is, Orthodox Jews, they will clean the cracks in the floorboards, all the corners. In Jesus' day, they would get feather, uh, feathers and they would dust off the top shelves. Everything had to be gotten out. You may say, that sounds like a lot of trouble. Well, it just depends on how serious you are about dealing with leaven. If, you, if you're not serious, then nothing much is going to happen. You know, today, we as, we as Baptists, we're, we're just so lazy. We don't, we don't want to do anything that really costs us a lot. Man, that sounds like a lot of work. Well, you know what the old timers called it? Back a generation or two ago, you know what they called it? Spring cleaning. Because it was in March and April. And that was also a reason why, also, why you had spring revivals. Because it was a time to spiritual spiritually get the leaven out so that the Spirit of God could begin to work. That's why in March, first week in March, we're having a spring conference. Folks, listen, this isn't, this isn't a, a, just a spring conference. This is a time for God to work in our heart and lives and deal with the leaven and do some cleaning, house cleaning, spiritual house cleaning in our lives so that the freedom of the Spirit can really move and do His work. It's called cleaning, dealing with it. So what do you do? You come before the Lord and you say, God, just do a removal work. Now, what do we do with spring cleaning? Well, we take, you know, all the junk and uh, stuff that we have and we take it to the trash can. Put it in the trash can. Uh, the garbage truck comes along, picks it up, puts it in the garbage truck, uh, and then he takes it to the landfill and there it's buried. Has the garbage been eradicated? It's just buried. It's just buried. See, what a lot of people will do is, I'm not going to do, quote, that leaven anymore, and they bury it. But you know what? The devil is amazing. 
He can go to the garbage dump of your life and he can dig down deep later and he can pull it up and say, Hey, hey, look at here. I remember. And you're like, Oh. So what do you do? You don't just bury it yourself. You take it to the one place where it can be dealt with. And that one place is at the cross. That one place is where the change agent for good is found. And that is the blood of Jesus that will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. When the devil digs it out of the garbage dump of your life, you say, wrong place, wrong time. Let's go to Calvary and see how that he dealt with my sin. And when you take him to Calvary, he says, let's get out of here, boys. I don't like being here. You've got to deal with it. He eradicates it by the power of the cross and the blood of Jesus. And then the other part is this. Constant vigilance. Constant vigilance. In other words, we, we have to stay alert. We have a, I talked to one of the great philosophers of our day, and uh, Milton Southall. And... Uh, I remember Milton, in fact, I double-checked with him this morning about this. He had a rule when the kids were little. In fact, this rule has been passed down to uh, the grandchildren. Uh, Sharon's family is from East Tennessee outside of Knoxville. He said when we would go to Knoxville and then come back a lot of times around Christmas, we'd be getting in late at night. Of course, the traveling, there was the food wrappers and all that goes with that. and, And he would say to the girls this, he would say, his daughters, I don't think he said this to Sharon. I can't see Sharon taking anything from him. Uh, But he would say, don't go inside unless you've got at least two things in your hand that need to go in the garbage can. Why? He said, because we don't want to have to deal with it later. Now, what does your life look like? In fact, I asked uh, the grandson, I said, is that true? He goes, yeah, he taught me that too. So, uh, uh, So what is your life? You know, for sometimes I, I look at my life and, and I'm like the car. It, it looks like a rolling Dempsey dumpster. And there are all kinds of objects that are going to come out from underneath the, the uh, seat and grab me by the leg. You know, they've grown uh, over a period of several months. And so there has to be constant vigilance where we say, Lord, short accounts with you, keeping things right, constant vigilance. Lord, keep this house for your honor and for your glory. Now let's just wrap all this up. What's the main leaven that the world uses and attaches so easily to us? The world's trinity, the leaven of the world says that the trinity, notice it's on little letters, me, myself, and I, and how quickly leaven can attach it when we make it all about us. But oh, how it changes when we make it all about him. Let's bow in prayer. If you would, just right now, present your face to God and say, Lord, what do you see? I know what I want.